I moved here about five years ago. Uh, I tried the geographical relocation to try to better my life and um, hasn't worked out too well for me. It was during season and I met a girl and after work we went out to party one night and she told me she had a certain kind of drug and asked if I'd want to try it. Three and a half years later it's been the drug of my choice and that's methamphetamine. It just took my life over. It wasn't an obsession, you know, my addiction turned into like an infatuation, like it was it was it turned into a disgusting love affair. Because for me, you know, once I start using I can't stop. So the only time I get clean is when I come to jail. And then as soon as I'd get out of jail, you know, I'd do what most addicts do. You know, I'd go right back to, you know, what I was doing before I came to jail. But each time I got out, I dove deeper and deeper into the lifestyle of my drug of choice and you know this time it almost cost me 48 months of my life. If I wouldn't have came to this pod, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I would have died. You have to admit you're powerless. You got to get honest with yourself. And, and for me, that was the hardest part was getting humble, you know, admitting to another grown man that I need help. It's like a brotherhood up here. It's like, you know, the camaraderie is something you won't find anywhere else in this jail, let alone, you know what I mean, with a bunch of people that are using and drinking. So that's the craziest part is you get all of us together in one room, sober. You know, it's like you're not even in jail besides the orange clothes we have to wear. The relationship with the, with the officers is different in here than it would be downstairs because they want to help you. You know, they ask you how you're doing. They don't speak to you man to inmate, they speak to you man to man. Usually the ones that work in here are because, you know, they have family members that have dealt with the same thing or that have gone through the same thing. Or some of them used to use and drink themselves and they feel like you know they can relate to us. They basically break it down to us so they make us feel like we're not the only ones going through it. And they sit with us through the meetings, you know, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, they're in here going through the motions just like we are, but at the same time they're trying to better their lives as well as we are. So, you know, our stories help them and their stories help us. And sometimes, you know, coming from an inmate or somebody in jail, you know, you you don't believe that, that a guy in green wants the same thing for you or, you know, has family members or, you know, loved ones dealing with the same things as you. So when you sit here on these frisbees, you know, and listen to a man behind the box, you know, share his experience, strength and hope with you, you know, sometimes it's hard to believe. But after you've been in here for a while, you start to notice a change in yourself because you're raising your hand to speak. And when you speak, you say, my name is Clay, I'm an addict or my name is Clay, I'm an alcoholic. And when a CEO raises his hand and speaks, he catch, it catches everyone off guard because they're not expecting it. And they say their first name. So it's not like, you know, we talk to them, we don't call them cops, you know, they, we call them by their first names, first, last names. It's like, they're just here to help us. They want us to do good. I got nothing to prove to anyone but myself. I have to stay clean because I want to stay clean. And I truly believe in my heart that this time, you know, it's, it's what I want, you know. It turned, in, it turned from a need to a want because not only my kid needs me, but I can be a productive member in society without using drugs. A lot of people say when they were arrested, they were rescued. Uh, for me, I'd say I was saved big time.